it is that time of the year when uh, we're gone out to buy ourselves uh, fancy cheeses even though a packet of easy singles would have done us uh, the other 11 months uh, because of course it is uh, it is Christmas and Karen, Kevin Sheridan from Sheridan's Cheeses uh, is with us again good afternoon Kevin good afternoon how are you today not too bad cheese is not just for Christmas Sean I know that uh, but people just Please don't remember see, people just don't care see, for your cheese all don't, year round don't seem to accept that is there are there cheeses that come out at different times of the year are they feel like mm. seasonal cheeses there is to a certain extent not as much as there used to be basically we've got loads of milk during the summer mm. so that's what cheese comes from is yeah. preserving your milk for the winter time when you didn't have much and that's what Christmas food is about you know traditionally is about mm. your hams that have cured your jam that you picked the berries for in the autumn and you made your salmon that you got in the summer and you smoked and your cheese from lots of milk in the mm. summer so that's why we have all these great preserved foods even your Christmas pudding and things mm. like that dried fruit um, uh, but, but presumably there are, there are uh, Cheeses would have different periods where they'd be left sitting there. Yeah, presumably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like lots of some of the cheeses would be, um, say, made hard cheese made in the summer and then sold in the winter, or even some of the cheeses we have here are two years old, so the previous summer. Wow. Like cheeses. Yeah. You, you know, you need to eat like fresh buffalo mozzarella or something. Mm. It's best if you within a few days have been made. So it's not always the case that if you leave the longer you leave a cheese, no, the nicer no, no, it gets. No, 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 not at all. No. Mm. Uh, any of the soft ones. I mean, the hard cheeses are made to last and they age and age, but everything has its its time as well. Just because something's really old, you see these seven year old Parmesan's been sold and stuff and it's a lot of rubbish really yeah. <laughs> eating flint at that stage, you know. uh, somebody texted in there was a report in the Telegraph in the UK that British blue cheese is now outselling French blue cheese what brand of blue cheese from Ireland would your guest recommend well uh, it just so happens thanks for ringing in there as, as that's a good one well done right on cue <laughs> yes, there exactly <laughs> I've got a blue cheese here called um, Boyne Valley Blue mm. and it's literally we started selling it for the first time on Saturday Right, uh, brand new uh, blue cheese and the guy Peter Thomas makes up in County Loud who makes Bellingham Blue but he's making it for a goat farmer in Tower and County Mead Michael and uh, fantastic blue we've really got this one we've got uh, brilliant cashew blue Bellingham mm. Blue and then sort of a blue brie with club blue brie so great our cheese and we sell tons of, of blue cheese and, it's, and, and what, what define what a blue cheese is why is it a blue cheese now obviously there are streaks of, of, of blue green in it, in it. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, <laughs> of green in it that's a good point actually yeah. um, it's it's basically okay you've got a uh, a, a cheese and mould is part of cheese you know mm. um, and if you get some of that mould, you know, if you go back a few hundred years or a thousand years or whatever, you get some cracks into the cheese and maybe some blue mould found its way in there and somebody went, oh, that's kind of nice. Mm. So they, you know, looked at the strain of blue mould, bred it up and, and then people started eating blue cheese, you know. I mean, if you went back a hundred years ago, probably most cheese would have been a little bit blue, blue anyway. anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's now kind of done nicer specifically. Ones now, yeah. now and, and the thing that always strikes me, even though cheese is delicious by itself, mm. it's always... It's it's even nicer when it's in a combination of things. Uh, and, and 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 for instance, before we go around the, the, yeah. the plate of cheeses that you have, uh, the biscuits you have are, are Dizzy's oat biscuits. Yeah. So they're an Irish oat biscuit, just really nice chunky biscuits. Fresh bread is lovely, mm. you know. Or we do little tin wafery biscuits as well, you know. Mm. Whatever you're into, I really like the Dizzy's oat biscuits because they're kind of chunky and nice. Yeah, and like that. And then other things like I brought some for onion marmalade along as well because it's nice to. Cheese is quite heavy and fatty, so if you have something fresh or else sharp or sweet to go across it, it just, it just because that's really nice. yeah that's what, that nice uh, a combination of, of of the cheese and a little mm. bit of sweetness on top of yeah. it is, uh, yeah, is absolutely really gorgeous yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, would there be cheeses that you'd specifically rend- recommend to people to have on Christmas Day or does it uh, matter uh, really? it doesn't really matter you know I mean say Stilton is the most famous one that mm. people have it's that. And, and it is really good we do Colson Bass Stilton small Stilton producer and it is always gorgeous this time of year and in some ways you'd expect it not to be because they're making so much because they do sell so much at Christmas but um, the autumn milk that they use to make it is the best milk for making Stilton and that's why Stilton's so famous at Christmas because it was always the best cheese ah, right, time I of see. year you know? mm. um, but no I mean go in and have a taste in one of the shops and, and decide what you really you know, eat stuff you like mm. really is the bottom line. And, I, you know? and would there be specific uh, sorts of wines that would go well with, you know, would you would you like, pair them uh, up that? You know, you've got to get, you know, you could spend years talking about it, but I, the, the reality is, you know, how many of us are going to open four different wines for our four different cheeses? You know, you're, you, whatever you're on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Christmas Day, you yeah. might. <laughs> a misconception is that red wine is is what you need to have with cheese. White wine is much better. Mm. The tannins in red wine tends to go against it. You know, there's exceptions to that and it's not always real, but in, as a general rule, white wines and sweet wines are fantastic as well. But do you know what's brilliant is uh, porter, you know? 
Portrait, yeah, it's true, yeah. yeah really well, we do, well, as you know, we do movies and booze here, yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, and we've had before uh, kind of Belgian, which are kind of Belgian beers, which are quite heavy yeah, beers yeah. with cheeses, and yeah, they go yeah. really well together. Yeah, no, actually. really good. I did a tasting with uh, the guys, Ollie from the Porterhouse, uh, mm. down in Waterford recently, and we did a lot of different beers, a couple of porters, some of the really yeasty beers, and they're fantastic. Like So, mm. I mean, this... As we sort of grow up as a nation, I suppose, as well, you know, we're allowed to have, you know, our nice things like, a, a, you know, a bottle of beer and some of our fantastic Irish cheese. You know, we don't have to have some fancy French cheese and fancy French wine. You know? No, it's true. Yeah. Anyway, go, uh, go, go through uh, with me, Kevin, uh, the, the cheeses <coughs> we have in front of us now. OK, so I brought four Irish cheeses because um, just because Irish cheese is fantastic Irish farmer's cheese. So we don't really need to buy any other cheese. Uh, these small producers are, are, are brilliant so we're promoting that at the moment but I did bring one French because I can't resist sitting at the front door <laughs> we were talking earlier about uh, seasoned cheese this is only made in winter so you only get it in winter time right okay we always have tons of these beautiful lush well actually yeah before we get into the Irish cheese this, this because this is it, because it, it even looks extraordinary because yeah, it's yeah. in a kind of a, a, a round tub a round wooden tub yeah. very thick skin on the top of it and it looks even a bit custardy. It, it, it does. I've never used that word, but that's exactly yeah. what it looks like. It's like semi-liquid inside. And I don't know if you hear the squelch as I'm yeah. doing it there. <laughs> it's slightly embarrassing. Um, it's called Mont d'Or. And in the summertime, they make a hard cheese called Comte in, in this area of France, in the east of France. And then in the wintertime, all the cattle are in on hay. And normally for the Comte, a lot of farmers would come together with the milk and they make these huge, big cheeses. But in the winter... Uh, they couldn't do that, they couldn't transport the milk, so they started making this soft cheese. And so when the cows are in from sort of October till March, um, they make this soft cheese. Mm. Um, and it's it's not too strong, like it looks like it might be a bit, but it's not it's quite delicate, just really lovely. And it's the kind of cheese, because people often ask, you know, a cheese board, should I have five cheese in six years? I mean, I'd be happy with that plonk in the middle of the table, you know, mm. everybody dig in, because you can literally, I've just cut back the rind there, and you can literally spoon in. You can literally spoon it in. I'd say, though, you'd be sucking it out of your teeth for the next day and a half. Uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. No, 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 that's good. I don't know where you might venture a little bit. Of okay, I'll, I'll try a little, a little piece of this. Mm. It's, uh... You know, it's weird. It's like... Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't bring you anything nasty, you know. No, no, is it because you're expecting a kind of quite a strong yeah, and no, it's no, not it's quite, quite subtle and then, and and then you kind of get it afterwards, yeah. 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 No, really, really Because nice. it's so soft, it's a... <laughs> It's a bit like a cheese spread almost, yeah, yeah, though obviously yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, a yeah, cheese yeah, spread. No, 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 um, that's really that's lovely. Okay, so uh, okay, tell us so about these, uh, these Irish, uh, Irish cheeses. We've got, we've got Durs here from uh, Sheep Sound Head Peninsula. Uh, Jeff Gill's been making this for nearly 30 years now. Just a brilliant, a little bit like this in its flavour, a little bit more earthy, mm. um, but similar as well. Um, we've got the um, Boyne Valley Blue that I told you about. That's quite a big blue. It's actually similar enough to Stilton and that's quite a firm blue. Mm. Um and really, really nice, nice touch. I've got a, a really rare one called Millhouse from County Offaly, made by the Gerbers down there, who have nineteen goats. So wow. we don't have much of it, guys. So yeah. get into the shop if you want some. We only have it in our Dublin shop, but they're a lovely couple, uh, real artists and producers. Literally, you know, just making a few wheels of cheese every day. Mm. Um, so that's a sheep's milk cheese. And then I've got Coulee from McCroom in County Cork, and this is from the summer of where we are now to 2008. So this is a real example of, of something preserved and it's just at its peak now, really crunchy and sweet and caramelly. Really, mm. really nice. When a cheese uh, producer is, uh, uh, and you know, when they're starting off devising the kind of cheese they're going to make and, they, and obviously they want their cheese to be distinctive, mm. What things are what? What are the balance of, if you like, ingredients that they need, they need to make something that's really different to anything else that's out there? Um, the, I mean, we, we get a lot of people in coming, you know, I get phone calls and stuff. Uh, farmers in Ireland and stuff going, I'm going to make a cheese, you know, what should I make? <laughs> it's like... Uh, <laughs> as long as it makes a string, a, well, yeah. One, make a really nice cheese because it doesn't matter if it's really good and make one that you like. Mm. You, know, cause these, you know, the cheese that I've seen come through us that have failed are the ones from producers who've come in with a, a market research booklet, you know, yeah. and uh, 20 different labels that they're asking me whether they should use. And the ones that have worked of people have come in, which is a big wheel of cheese and gone what do you reckon of this? You know, I've been making this in my kitchen for the last two years and I think it's ready now. You know, so it's it's a, it's a case of, it, you know, and all the great cheeses like like Doris or Coulet, um, 
Helen Willems, her son makes it now. She made that in the kitchen for her sons. They moved over from Holland in the 60s. She started making them in the early 70s just because she couldn't buy any cheese down in Cork. Mm. She was sick of it. So she started making a bit of cheese. Then sold it to a few neighbours and a restaurant took it. And she was pretty much one of the first Irish cheese, of the new Irish cheese makers, you know. Um, same and, with and I would say you know, the person who was making it in their <coughs> kitchen, <coughs> you know, would they, and, and they're experimenting until they feel yeah. they have it right, yeah. they're, they, would they, they're putting different sorts of herbs into no, it? No, or, no, no. Or, it's, or, it's, I mean, cheese is milk. That's it. Yeah. And so basically you get milk you put some what we call starter cultures in which is basically like a yogurt culture mm. you know if you get milk and put yogurt